Hi, my name is Thomas Miskus and welcome to German Currents Film Festival 2021 and to our conversation with writer, director of Curveball, Johannes Naber. Curveball was awarded the German Film Award in Bronze as Best Feature Film. Other works by Johannes include The Albanian, Heart of Stone and Age of Cannibals as director and also the screenplay for North Face amongst others. So, uh, Thanks for spending some time with us, Johannes, and welcome to German Currents. Hi, thanks for having me. First of all, congrats on uh, two German Film Awards for Best Feature Film, but also for Thorsten as Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Curveball is a true story. Uh, it's compelling, it's shocking, it's infuriating. And I have to say, I never heard of it before. So I didn't know about any of the involvement of the Bundesnachrichtendienst. Uh, how did you hear about this story? How did this all come about and how long did it take you to develop it? Ooh, yeah, as an interested newspaper reader, I stumbled upon that uh, whole story maybe in 2008, 2009, the first time uh, that the source um, uh, that led uh, to these informations that legitimized the uh, Eric Bohr it was a German source and um, the German Secret Service was involved. And um, then uh, piece by piece, actually, um, the facts came out. People found them, journalists who, who did research found them. And um, uh, it connected together to, 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 to a story actually that made me uh, quite furious because um, when this when this war happened, I believe that we Germans we were on the good side of uh, the people that uh, didn't support the whole thing. And uh, when I when I I didn't know that my government actually had had proof uh, uh, that the whole story that has been presented by Colin Powell was a uh, was not true was a lie. And that actually made me mad and uh, uh, made me starting to think about how to make a movie out of it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you started as a, I read as a documentary filmmaker, you went to Baden-Württemberg uh, to the Film Academy, um, yet you made a, 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 a narrative feature film with that subject, which could have also been a great documentary. What made you do a, a narrative feature and do you see any advantages of reaching audiences perhaps uh, by telling, making a satire out of it? Mm. Um, there are documentaries about it, uh, um, okay. and quite a few actually. One of them won an Emmy Award. It's called uh, War of Lies, um, uh, and um, it's also about curveball, about Rafid Alban. And um, n none of these documentaries uh, made the people that have been involved uh, in the whole thing made them talk, made them uh, justify. Uh, they're 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 doing you know from american perspective it's 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 quite it's quite boring because you know in america this thing is is is, is being discussed you know it's it's true it's kind of uh, uh you you guys you you actually uh the politicians talked about it uh, uh it has been discussed uh back and forth uh people stumbled about it rumsfeld went out of his job uh because of the whole story you know but in germany nobody talked about it and uh, people uh, that are involved in the whole story are uh, still in charge, and uh, that's uh, completely normal. And um, th that's the reason why in Germany the whole thing is a little bit more um, uh, important than maybe for an American view. It's an interior uh, kind of uh, working out what was the German part of the whole story. Has there been uh, discussion statements by people that have been involved back then since the movie came out also, you know, from, you know, Joschka Fischer, Steinmeier to, you know, any of the people involved really, or the people that knew about it? Yeah, actually, um, uh, uh, quite astonishingly uh, is that in the Tages team, which is the most important uh, news uh, uh, broadcasting uh, in, in, in Germany and the, the official program um there um august hanning the former president of the bundesnachrichtendienst of the german secret service uh, made a statement uh, and it's the first statement uh, somebody of the bundesnachrichtendienst made about the whole thing since 20 years and he made it uh, uh, because there was a report uh, on the start of the movie uh, actually so yes 
uh, there are reactions um, from that side, which is, um, uh, yeah, that's what we wanted. And uh, that's uh, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever meet Rafid in, in person or since you, I, I've, I've known you, I've seen this since in interviews that you haven't met him while making the movie, but uh, since it came out, have you been in touch with him by chance or have you, have, has he seen the film, do you know? No, actually, I'm still waiting uh, <laughs> to 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 meet him. Actually, yeah, when we made the movie, I we decided not to meet him um, because you know he's an insecure source. He's not a good source uh, to um, find something out about the truth. Actually, he's not not the right person. That was clear from the beginning. And um, additionally, you know, he 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 earns money with his story. You know, he's he's. He's a traveler uh, with with this story. You know, he gives interviews. He tries to uh, also uh, make new versions of the whole thing. You know, and what we wanted to avoid, which was important for us, is to give him the opportunity to say that he actually somehow is involved in our story finding. You know, and that was because because he's so well covered, and we talked to so many people who knew who knew him, know him. Uh, we decided that it's maybe the better choice not to meet him uh, but now the film is done uh, uh, it's been shown in cinemas and uh, now would be a good moment uh, and i'm waiting to that <laughs> looking forward actually i want to hear about that once you meet him yes um the title curveball was that a code name that was used back then or is that something that you came out came up for, uh, for the movie no it's the code name the... that um, uh, the cia gave uh, rafid alban when mm -hmm. the first reports from Germany came uh, in the end of the 90s. And, and as far uh, as you know, it's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's, I read it somewhere. Is the, 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 the word ball, if ball appears in the name, it it's, it's, uh, means that it's somehow ballistic, which means the guy has to do with weapons. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of the code. And, uh, and, um, how much did you stick to the truth in the film? I know there's some fictional characters in there. Is that so you can morph some uh, characters that were real life characters into one for storytelling? Yes. Uh, so how much did you stay to the, true to the facts and how much liberty did you take for the feature? Yeah, yeah. You asked me why we made a fiction movie, and uh, yeah, that's actually the, the point is that the documentary is, uh, did not reach the bigger audience and uh, uh, did not have that impact that uh, we wanted to to have, and also um, uh, to compress a story like this that's very complicated into one and a half hours and making it understandable for a broader audience. What happened? Actually, that's something you can only do in a fictionalized uh, version. And that's why we chose that. And also, in addition, it was very important to us to have this this, this, this slight touch of humor in it, you know, this absurdity, uh, to show this absurdity of the whole of the whole thing. Um, um, so what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how much liberty you took? Uh, also ah, okay. In, in terms of Paris, telling the truth, know, in, yeah. In, in, in um, storytelling, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, actually, it's a fictionalized story. Uh, that's clear. That means the 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 the, the sled race didn't happen, for example. You know. Oh damn um, it! I love that. <laughs> yeah. No, it didn't, and it didn't. And um, uh, I think what we try to 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 do is to to follow the intentions of the real people and to 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 get clear what every side every part uh, wanted to achieve uh, had as motives for their actings and uh, also to 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 compress a, a very very complicated um a, a bunch of people to just a few figures um uh, for example the whole american part is compressed into one figure which for some americans might be a little bit too simple <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah that was the, the 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 way to make it understandable you know to make um to to, to give the people an idea of uh, how uh, the whole yeah how the shit hit the fan you know um uh, these days and it's also about the german american relationship uh, uh like the, the the wolf and 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 leslie are like germany and the us uh, in a way you know it's like like a, a, a love and not understanding you know like the refused lover and uh, uh, uh 
the way of you know it, it turns completely around when 9 11 happens you know and uh, the misunderstanding uh, uh, goes very wrong or very becomes very sad because the americans act in a way that the germans didn't expect to and uh, uh, believe that is wrong and uh, 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 that was kind of um yeah hurt love somehow you know and that's um, mirroring in the relation between these two uh, characters. So is Germany or America the misunderstood lover in that relationship then? Um, <laughs> Germany is the misunderstood lover. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, you talk about the absurdity and the satire and the, you know, in, in this whole story. Uh, and there is a, there is a lot of, of humor and really like uh, scenes that are totally absurd and also the, you know, the characters itself. Was that something that you had in mind when writing the script? Was that something that was there also improvisation on set when filming and that the actors brought to the table then also? Mm, uh, yeah, it was clear from the beginning that we wanted this absurdity and we wanted it even stronger. And uh, during the shooting and the editing, we, 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 we realized that um, the, the, the serious background of the story didn't don't doesn't allow us to be too absurd to be too grotesque uh, to make the people too much laugh uh, because they the other part is even stronger um yes and we we, we tried to get absurdity in all the time the actors did a, 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 a whole a big part on that uh, and uh, then we had to get it back out again it was kind of a back and forth uh, progress <laughs> You uh, you filmed uh, in English. It's a German story. It's a German perspective, but you opted to film in English language. What was the thought behind that for a German film? We opted. We, we shot in two languages, in German and English. I don't know what 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 version. I hope that's the version you're seeing right there, because the American uh, release also has a completely dubbed version, uh, English English, uh, which I don't like very much. I have to say. Uh, hopefully you saw uh, the mix. I have to rewatch. I saw the English English version. So I'm yeah, then you might realize that there's a kind of a, a different levels of <laughs> quality in the acting. <laughs> okay, yeah, because the main character that. actually dubbed himself, and um, he is Danish, uh, isn't he? No, or... it's German. Danish is the the, the guy who played Raffit. Oh, he Rapid is uh, oh, okay. Cool. He's, Danish. He's Danish. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, it's it's a two language movie. Yeah, <laughs> I will rewatch now, and I think also audiences here will have seen the the German voice version with English subtitles. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, you also scored the music for the film. I saw in the in the end credits. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's um, right. What, I didn't want to do music I didn't want to do it. I've never done it before. Um, uh, but I, I somehow knew exactly how it should sound and what it should be. And I didn't find the musician who was willing to do this kind of very naive, childish, uh, uh, improvisation-ish uh, uh, kind of minimalistic music. And uh, I made um, a draft on the computer and uh, my editor and my sound people told me hey maybe you have to do it alone this time and uh, then i decided to do alone and um, that was quite a big step because i'm, I'm i have a lot of um, respect for uh, uh, composers uh, and um, i think i it's it's not that i always want to do that but in that case with that kind of score uh, it was the best choice maybe and did you enjoy the experience Definitely, definitely. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm making music for myself my whole life and uh, and um, I never thought that I going to compose something for a movie. Uh, it was a good experience because it brought me, um, yeah, a new perspective on that kind of work. Uh, um, it was a lot of work because I'm, I needed longer than maybe other people do. Uh, but um, yeah, it was it was fun. Oh, cool. I like that. Um, the conclusion of the film for me is kind of that, well, it, it's not news, but you know that governments and politicians lie to people, they twist the truth, they manipulate. And 
I just wonder how you deal with that. I mean, I, I, you said earlier that you are, obviously you're informed with news, you dig into, you, 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 uh, but even that nowadays, I, I often feel like there's a lot of manipulation there as well. And, uh, and I often felt ohnmächtig or hilflos, helpless about that. How do you feel about it? And what can you as a, as a private citizen do? I mean, people always say, well, then vote for mm. someone else next time. But I feel that's too little. And who do you vote for? It's often, especially here in America, it's, 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 it's often the choice between the two lesser evils. Uh, uh, how do you deal with this nowadays and where do you get your need, news and how do you fact check on it? You know, what's your take on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first of all, I have to say that in, 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 in lying to people and using fake realities, uh, uh, this Eric Wall was kind of a Pandora's box. Uh, because the the level of of lies uh, really uh, got to new quality. Um, because uh, since then, it's possible to lie to the audience, even though you know that they know that it's a lie, and uh, you can stay on the stage. That's new. Uh, that's a new level, and actually, that made Trump possible. That's what I think, and a lot of other things. And um, yeah, I think we have to accept that. We are in a world where um, truth is not an objective matter, but uh, uh, um, it's, it's, it's subjective. It's something that um, people have to discuss and have to negotiate. And we have to talk. Uh, that's why people talk, to negotiate about the truth, about a version of truth. And it's clear that 100 years ago, uh, uh, the truth was different. And uh, in 100 years, it will be different too. Uh, and um, it's just it's, it's it's a state of truth that we are negotiating, and we have to negotiate. We have to sit on one table and to talk, and we have to we have to keep talking. That's what I think. But but, but do you think that it, that is something that uh, you know? If you see the division everywhere, I mean, here in the United States, it's it's very extreme. But I, I see that also all over Europe. That that is actually something that we forgot to cultivate. That. Uh, you know, it's there's two parts, but we don't talk, we don't put ourselves in the position of the other party and see where yes. they are coming from. And that that is something that it's not cultivated, but also, you know, I, I think it's kind of lost in our society somehow. And it's on personal relationships in, in a small circle, you know, it could be in, you know, but it's also Family. in government, you know, you see that from here to there. Yeah, uh, and uh, is that something that should be taught more, or you know? I, definitely, I think it uh, it should be talked more over, uh, because um, uh, you know it's it's it, maybe it's because of the the internet, because of people are uh, spending their times in bubbles and news bubbles, uh, um, uh, and even in Europe, in Germany, we have this problem uh, since the coronavirus very strongly. You know that there's a minority of people who just uh, say this is not true, the virus doesn't exist, or it's just a simple flu, or uh, uh, we don't have to accept all this. Uh, um, this measures uh, um, from the government uh, and um, uh, people have been they stopped talking to each other and that's a big problem you know because they're they're going different ways at the moment and uh, i don't know where it ends it ends in 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 in, in, in uh, gewalt in um uh how do you say gewalt um, um oh my god now i'm blanking in um... <laughs> Fight. Violence. 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 Thank yeah. you. Violence. Someone. Violence. Yeah, it ends thank in violence. You, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but also, you know, I think with truth, I mean, isn't it that people, you know, people are just scared and they want to hold on to whatever they want to believe in. And, 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 you know, I also see kind of a, a resignation, you know, be here, you know, people just, you know, you know, Trump is lying and people don't care anymore. Uh, yeah. what's happening in Austria now with politics, with yeah. the, the government and all the unraveling. But people, I think there's also a level of resignation of people don't not caring anymore. You know, I, I think there is a huge difference from when I grew up, you know, I like I was a teenager in the 80s and we would go on demonstrations like at least once a month. There was always a demonstration against something we tried to make. And, and you know, I, I don't know if this is a generation also with, with internet where this is just 
happening differently? And uh, do you think uh, newer generations now to this going on the streets and demanding, you know, change and truth that this is kind of happening in a different sphere nowadays? I hope it's happening at all, actually. But I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, uh, I see young people fighting for things that are important for them, and uh, as we did. And um, uh, yeah, I think it's happening. I've, I'm, I'm optimistic, actually, uh, that um, uh, we will manage uh, all these uh, tasks. Uh, we unfortunately have to wrap up this interview. I would like to talk to you longer. But the last question is, um, A, you, before we started the interview, you said you're in your little writer's cabin right now. So I'm wondering yeah. if you're working on something new. What's next? And uh, I read in an interview, you said, make every film as if it would be your last. So um, how do you mean that? And what's your next project? I mean that, that you have to invest everything, that you d don't should not calculate about any reactions, but to um, invest yourself completely if you make a movie, you know? Uh, and um, that's very, very demanding because, you know, I'm also getting older and uh, uh, it's not so easy. But um, I think it's important um, that you I cannot work in a chain, you know, one movie after another. And when I work on the one movie, I, I already know what the other movie will be and working on the script of a third movie. I cannot do that. I make a movie. I make it with my whole with everything. And uh, when it's ready, when it's done, I have to sleep for a month and um, uh, then I can start on a new project. That's very demanding, but it gives me I don't know. Mm, it gives a, a, a kind of intensity uh, to the process that is important for me to get some kind of quality. It seems also very healthy because it seems like you're totally immersed and put the focus on what is at the moment and then you move on to the next. So, yeah, and uh, if you lose everything on it, then it's okay because you made the movie. <laughs> That's how it meant, this uh, quote. And I'm working on, um, uh, on, a, on, a, on a very small uh, movie about, uh, um, how do you say, Hartz IV, which is um, uh, the German welfare uh, system. Um, and uh, a, a writer who, who tries to write a book since 20 years, but uh, is depending on a welfare system because he didn't publish anything. And then they force him to, um, to become um, a watchman. How do you say? Somebody who... Who, who, a security who, guard kind of security thing. guard yeah yeah security guard and uh, it's a kind of a completely senseless job that he does it just watching a, a building uh, that's not used and uh, uh, it's about yeah senseless work and um, a welfare system and all that oh, i'm looking forward to seeing that and we hope to bring it to german currents yeah uh, johannes <laughs> Yeah, no, I hope to, and because it would be nice to have you here in person in the in the years to come. I would uh, would love to wel welcome you here. Uh, thanks for spending the time with us. Uh, thanks for bringing Curveball to Los Angeles. And for viewers, if you want to check out the program, uh, go to germancurrents.com. And thank you again, Johannes, for for taking the time. It was inspiring and insightful. Thank you. <laughs>